What's up guys, today we're going to talk about Apache web server and how to configure Apache for our web applications. So one important thing to note here is we are not talking about Apache Tomcat which is a Java J2 EE servlet container for running Java web apps. We are talking about Apache web server. Now if you're wondering why to use a web server when we already have our main application server that can handle all the requests, there are certain benefits of using a web server in front of your main application server that actually handle the request. One of the benefit is load balancing. Suppose uh, you're, you have an application that is quite popular and you're getting a lot of requests now. Say for example 1000 requests per second. Now how you can handle such a load on your system is you put more servers and then you run the same code on those uh, other servers. And then you configure a web server so all the incoming requests can get distributed to these multiple uh, servers by using a web server so we can use apache to distribute all the incoming requests to these three servers so for example apache can distribute requests like 300 requests to server 1 300 requests to server 2 and the rest of the requests to server 3 by distributing the request to multiple server it will result in better response time and your users will have a better experience while using the application other important feature of using a web server is caching in web application, most of the time, we respond back with uh, static resources like a CSS file or JS file or an image file or it can be a text file or a JSON file. Uh, rather than making a request to the application server for these static resources, what we can do is we can cache these uh, static resources because these resources don't change very often. We can cache these resources inside the web server. So next time when a request for these static resources come, we can directly uh, respond back to these re uh, requests from the web server. So if a request for static res uh, re uh, res uh, resource comes, it does not even have to go to your main application server. We can directly respond back to these res uh, requests by our web server. Another important feature that you can get by using a uh, web server is request redirect. Suppose you have SSL, you are using SSL for your uh, application and you only want to allow users to use HTTPS. So you don't want users to use HTTP connection. So what you can do is you can use web server and configure it so that all the HTTP requests that are coming in, it can get redirected to HTTPS connection. So you can redirect all HTTP requests into HTTPS requests. Uh, and another uh, important feature that you can implement by using a web server is suppose you are doing some activity on your server and you in that period you don't want your users to access the application so in that period you want to show the users say something like maintenance page uh, we are doing this site is under maintenance and please check back after some time so it may be uh, you are doing some server backup or some other activity so in that period we can show a maintenance page so to do that we can uh, implement that thing in our web server without even changing the application code that's a great thing so you don't have to change anything in your application you can change certain uh, or you can configure your web server to handle such a request so enough talking and now let's see how to do that using apache so I'm running a Ubuntu 14.04 system and I already have Apache installed. If you don't have, just do a sudo apt-get update to update the repositories and then just do sudo apt-get install Apache 2. That's it. And once you have Apache installed, your files for Apache will be inside etc apache2 directory. Now this apache2.conf is the main uh, file that have the basic configurations uh, for Apache server. The sites that the directories that we are interested in is sites available and sites enable these two directories. So whatever is there, whatever configuration file that you put into sites enable will be taken into effect by Apache. So when you start Apache, it will look uh, and grab all the files that are there in the sites enable and will apply all the rules that you have defined in those configuration files. So let's see what's there in these directories. So let's get into EDC, Apache 2 and sites available. So when you first install uh, Apache, you will have a default file inside sites available directory. 
Now let's see what's there in sites enabled. Uh, we have a sim link for the same file that is there in the sites available directory. So we don't create uh, our configuration files inside sites enabled. We actually create files inside sites available and then we create a sim link for those files inside sites enabled so that uh, Apache can load those files and apply those rules that we have defined inside the file inside sites available directory. So these are the default files uh, that you will get when you first install Apache. So we are going to edit these files. It's better you take a backup of these files. So in case if you mess up with configuration files, you can always fall back to the defaults. So before we create configuration, let's first see what is the application uh, for which we want to create the configuration in Apache web server. So I'm having a simple node application which uses Express as the web framework. So this is the server file. So we are requiring Express and we are setting EJS as our view engine. Then we are defining our public directories where our static assets will be there as a public uh, directory name is public. So a.css is the CSS file. This waka.jpg is the image and JS files are inside the JS directory. So all our public assets, which is resources, static assets are defined inside this public directory. And on the root uh, request, we are sending the index page, which is here, index view. This is just simple uh, HTML page. Uh, we are uh, adding the CSS and the JS file and just header, some header, hello app, and the image from that public directory. So js.a.js and css and this jpg file. So if you request for slash uh, on the root of the application, it will serve you index.ejs file. So let's run this file. And we are running this on port 3000. So app.listen on port 3000. So let's go, let's open a new tab. And let's get into, it's inside the home. So the name is hello. And let's just run this. Node.js server JS cache the action at localhost 3000. So let's go and I'm already actually running that. So if you refresh this, uh, you will get this page hello app. And if you see the console uh, networks tab, if you refresh again, we are making requests for CSS file, JS file, and our JPG file, which is there in that index page. So this is our application that we are serving on port 3000. Now what we want is, now if a user wants to access this thing, a uh, user have to specify the port number 3000. We don't want users to know on which app, uh, port this uh, application is actually running on the server. So all they want is to be able for user to say just localhost and they should be able to access this application. So we can do that by using Apache. So we will configure Apache to listen to port 80 and then uh, pass that request to uh, application that is running on port 3000. That's what we are going to do here. So let's first start the Apache. So just to see it's working, uh, let's first start Apache. So you can start Apache like there are many ways we are going to do etc and at d okay once again sudo it's an etc and at d and apache 2 and we're going to just start okay password starting web server apache okay so now if you access localhost your apache should be working so apache default page is this one so apache is working now let's configure apache so that any request that is made on port 80 goes to this application that is running on port 3000 so we want next user should be able to just say localhost which is actually your uh, host name it can be something like uh, abc.com 
so rather than users say abc.com on port 3000 they should be able to say just abc.com and we should be able to serve our application so let's create the configuration file so I'm gonna open a new tab and we are, are in sites enable I'm go back on directory and we will go into sites available and there is already a default file we're gonna edit this file so let's open this file with nano so actually I have edited this file so all the contents of this file I have deleted this and we are going to write our configuration here from the scratch which is which will be very short so let's write it so it will be a virtual host all the requests it will take all the requests and it will listen on port 80 and close this virtual host tag and here we gonna specify our inside this we're gonna specify our configuration and for this to work so we want all the requests that coming on port 80 to be proxied to the application that is running on port 3000 so to do that we're just gonna specify proxy pass proxy pass and all the requests from the slash which is root should be proxied to http localhost and 3000 which is the port where our application is running that's it so i'm gonna just save this and let's exit now for this to work uh, proxy thing to work you have to enable uh, two modules actually so when you first install uh, apache you get a com uh, command a2 in ea2 en mode which is actually saying apache enable module so by using this command you can enable modules so if you just run this a2 e and mode you will see what uh, modules you have and what modules you can uh, enable so we will need two modules one is proxy which is here so I'm I, we have to enable this proxy module and we also have to enable proxy HTTP where is proxy HTTP yeah it's here so we have to enable these uh, two modules to be able to use proxy feature of Apache so let's enable it's asking which module do you want to enable so I'm gonna say proxy it says module proxy already enabled because I already enabled this module previously so let's install uh, let's enable this proxy HTTP also proxy HTTP again this uh, module is already enabled so I have already enabled these modules so now we should be able to uh, apply this configuration we have saved the file it's looking okay so let's again save it one more time and just reload uh, the Apache server because we have changed the configuration file sites inside sites available so let's do that so I'm gonna say sudo EDC inetd and Apache and I'm gonna say reload for that changes to take effect we have to reload so now if I say localhost we should get the application that is running on port 3000 it didn't work seems like okay let's see localhost okay let's see what's the problem in we will go to sites available and we're gonna open this file so we are specifying virtual host all the requests on port 80 and proxy pass it should work yeah this file is okay and this control x let's 
first okay let's try to stop and then start actually we shouldn't be doing that because reload should work okay now it's working so maybe it have cached uh, that page that's why it was showing that so just by saying localhost we are able to now access our application so that's what we wanted so we don't want users to actually specify the port even though that app uh, that request will directly go to this application which is running on port 3000 but now our users can just say localhost and they will be accessing the application that's it so that's how we can configure an application that is running on port a different port to be able to be accessible from the port 80. So I hope I you find it helpful. Cheers and have a great day.